Welcome or welcome back at C Square. In this lesson, we will talk about ratio and proportion. And you need you notice first uh, I said what a ratio and what a proportion is. And we're gonna start with um, this example. Determine whether each pair of ratio are equivalent ratio. So you notice a ratio also can be written like a quotient: three over five and fifteen over twenty-five. One way to see if two Ratio or equivalent is to use a calculator and do 3 divided by 5, 15 over 25 also, and see if you get the same thing. Or to simplify. Now, 3 over 5 is in the simplest form. Nothing can be done, so it stays as it is. However, 15 can be broken as 3 times 5 and 25, 5 times 5. You notice they have a common factor of 5, which we can simplify, and we end up with 3 over 5. These two guys are the same. So in this moment, we say these two uh, ratio are equivalent ratio. Uh, B, the same uh, way, we can take a look to 12 over 25 and see if we can simplify. Uh, and this cannot be simplified the same about 8 over 21. Nothing we can do. So I'm going to use what I said, a calculator. And I'm going to do 12 divided by 25 and uh, 8 divided by 21. 12 divided by 25 is exactly 0.48, since 8 divided by 21, it's around 0.38. Okay, it's an approximation. However, we notice they are not the same, so these two uh, ratio are not equivalent. No, and this, yes. Okay, uh, let's move to the second part of this lesson, where you talk about proportion. We want to see when I solve uh, this uh, proportion, when I find x, and you notice we have two ratio and the uh, equals between them. How you solve this proportion? This is the way you do it in a proportion. The product of the extreme is equal to the product of the means. What does it mean here? The products of the extreme, x times 16, is equal with the product of the means, 8 times 7. Cross multiply in other words. And you want to find x here, you're going to divide by 16. So we have x equal 8 times 7 over 16. I will suggest you to simplify if it's possible. In this case it is. 8 goes in 16 two times. So the final answer will be 7 over 2. x is 7 over 2. Or if you want, we can put it as a decimal form, 3.5. Let's see uh, part B of this example. Part B of this example, it's talking about a very similar problem. The only difference, we have x minus 3 instead of x. But the idea is the same. We're going to have the product of the extremes, the product of these two guys, x minus 3 times 5 equal the product of the means, 15 times 2. So let me raise this 3 a little bit to be clear. And now one way to do it is to do distributive property. It's not the only one, by the way. And we have 5 times x minus 5 times 3, that is 15. And 15 times 2 is 30. My next step will be to add 15 to get rid of this minus 15. So don't forget to do the same thing on the other side. And we have 5x equals 30 plus 15 is 45. The last step, we're going to divide by 5 to get rid of this 5. Don't forget to do the same thing on the other side. So we have x equals 45 over 5, which can be simplified. And that will be just 9. Uh, on my next part of the lesson, I'm going to use proportion for solving some real-life problems like this one. The employee of Star Car Wash washed 148 cars in four, hour, in four hours. Look at here. I'm going to write this like a um, ratio. 148 cars in four hours. 
how many cars can they wash in six hours? I'm going to put equal sign here. And I have this information, six hours. So we, we use this. And now I'm going to use these six hours. These six hours needs to go down here. Why? Because we have hours and hours here. You want to be consistent. And how many cars? So I will suggest you to write for a while your proportion in this format so you can see if you are consistent. And then obviously uh, when you get into habit, you don't need these uh, units in, let's say like that. And uh, now we have a proportion. We're going to cross multiply the product of the extremes. 148 times 6 equals the product of the means. Again, I want to solve for x, so I have to divide by 4 to get rid of this 4. Don't forget to divide by 4 on the other side. So we have x equals 148 times 6 over 4. Let's try to do this with the calculator. And you notice 4 and 6, both even numbers. We can simplify by 2. 4 divided by 2, it's 2. And 6 divided by 2, it's 3. So we have 148. I'm sorry, 148 times 3 over 2. Again, we can simplify by 2. 2 goes in 148 74 times. So the answer will be x equals 74 times 3. And let's see if we can do that with our calculator, 74 times 3, 3 times 4, 12, 12 and 1, 3 times 7, 21, plus 122. So 3 times 4, 12 and 1, so we don't forget about that. So we get an X of 222. This is cars. That's the answer. So you may want to go back in your problem and see if it makes sense. 148 cars in 4 hours. Is, this, is it possible to have uh, 222 cars in six hours, and I think the answer is reasonable. If you switch this proportion, you will notice the answer will not be reasonable. So one more time, check your answer and see if it's reasonable. And a last example in this lesson where we can use proportion is this one. On a map, the distance between Jacksonville and New York is 10 centimeters. If 2 cm equals 186 miles, what is the distance between the two cities? So you notice here we have what we call a scale. On that map, 2 cm means 186 miles. But on that map, we can measure the distance between Jacksonville and New York, and that is 10 cm. Uh, want to find, in fact, what is the real distance between Jacksonville and New York. So you notice again, I put the units here and I am consistent. Centimeter and centimeter are part of the numerator, top of the fraction, miles and miles, part of the bottom and uh, the denominator. So now we're going to cross multiply. 2 times x equals 186 times 10. Again, I'm going to try to do it with our calculator. I'm going to divide by 2 to get rid of this 2 next to the x. So x is 186 times 10 divided by 2. And one way to do it is um, to simplify like this. 2 goes in 186. Well, how many times? 18 divided by 2 is 9. 6 divided by 2 is 3. So we have x equals 93 times 10, which is nothing else than 930. And don't forget, this one means miles. So the real distance between Jacksonville and New York is 930 miles. Again, you can go back and here or in the problem itself and see if your answer is reasonable. I think it is. If you enjoy this lesson, don't forget to click the like button and come back on C-square for more help. Thank you.